As Ukraine continues to fight back and enters the fourth week of this military operation, Ukrainian boxing legend, one of the world's greatest superstars from the world of boxing and sports, Vladimir Klitschko has now vowed to fight against mighty Russia. As Ukraine grows its resistance force, this Olympic gold medalist and the longest reigning heavyweight champion of the world has called for isolation of Russia from all sporting events. His brother Vitaly, also a former heavyweight champion of the world, has been the mayor of Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine since 2014, and is also picking up a weapon, fighting alongside his brother Vladimir. Take a look at this report. Former professional boxer, Olympic gold medalist, two-time world heavyweight champion, Ukrainian boxing legend Vladimir Klitschko has now vowed to fight against mighty Russia. The 45-year-old has called for the isolation of Russia from all sporting events. Hall of Fame Vladimir says he will defend his country till his last breath. This is our home. This is our home. Yes, there are a lot of refugees left towards west but a lot are coming back. So the families were brought to the West, part of it, and a lot of men and women. I'm proud of our women standing strong, coming back, defending the country. This is our home. He is not the only member of his family who is taking on Putin. Bullshit, sorry. Where is military target? This building is military target. Vitaly Klitschko, who was undefeated WBC heavyweight champion and now the mayor of Kyiv, is also fighting alongside his brother Vladimir. Vitaly Klitschko has been mayor of Kyiv since 2014. We will be defend our city. It's our homes. We don't have a. We never think to leave. It's our homes. We defend our children, family our buildings, our city, and our future, future of Ukraine. Klitschko brothers had also enlisted themselves earlier this month into the Ukrainian Reserve Army. The two big men standing shoulder to shoulder are in a fight unlike any they ever imagined. The prize for this one is not a championship belt, but the survival of their country itself. Bureau Report, India Today. A great honour for us here at the India Today Network and also for me personally as a long-standing observer and fan of the longest concurrent reigning heavyweight champion of the world who has now taken his gloves off to pick up body armour and a weapon to stand guard for his country as a citizen soldier. Vladimir Klitschko, welcome. Thank you for being with us here on India Today. Vladimir, Kiev has been surrounded and even as talks are on, Russian aggression and advancements continue in the city that you're in. You've been sending videos out of there. Russia claims that it is only targeting military establishments, but the videos that you've been sending out suggest otherwise. Whatever Russia is claiming, for instance, Foreign Minister Lavrov at the first meeting with the Ukrainians, publicly said that Russia is not interested of attacking any country hmm. and never attacked Ukraine. That was a lie. Russia is saying that they're fighting against Nazis. We have president of the country with Jewish roots. So it's a lie. They're trying to say that they're saving the Russian world in Ukraine. There are Ukrainians with Russian roots. Half of my blood is Russian. And we're not welcoming any army, any military boots and equipment on our soil our sovereignty and sovereignty of our borders 
and international law has been broken by Russia. And that's why Russian propaganda is confirming and saying that Ukraine is just the beginning. So there are other countries hmm. as well as in danger as Ukraine. And that only military objects are going to be attacked, it's a, another lie. As propaganda is lie, because Kharkiv, yep. districts of city of Kharkiv, been destroyed by cluster bombing. People, the residents, were killed. Cities that are satellite cities of the capital of Ukraine, as Bucha, Gostomel, Fastiv, Yes. Or in ash. Civilians were killed. Cities destroyed. Infrastructure is destroyed. Mariupol in the south of the country just yes. yesterday were up to 1,000 innocent men, women and elderly and children were hiding at the theater. The theater was bombed precisely by Russian Air Force bombed. Thankfully, that there was shelter in the ground, underground of the building, and people are getting digged out now. So it's, it seems like yeah. they are alive. But that has nothing to do a theater in the city of Mariupol, which has been destroyed 90% now. So whatever is coming out of Russia is a complete lie. And Vladimir, we have been, you know, covering uh, what's happened in Mariupol, in Kharkiv and the others. Our channel has reporters in all of those cities. So we've been bringing our viewers first-hand reports of that. But, you know, you've picked up a weapon. The Ukrainian military is being supplied by uh, other nations. There are more missiles coming in. Your country has asked for a no-fly zone from NATO, which has happened, hasn't happened just yet. What is the overall military plan, Vladimir? You're not a soldier, but you've picked up a weapon as part of the territorial defense. What, in your view, is the overall plan to defend Ukraine? We will take care of ourselves. We need military aid yeah. and equipment to defend ourselves. Ukraine is the most peaceful nation in all the years. We never attacked anyone and we will defend ourselves. We need military aid. We will take care of ourselves. Mm. And what our partners and allies, and this is most of the world, needs to sanction Russia, isolate economically Russia, because every cent that Russia is getting are used to buy more weapons, more rockets, more bullets to kill us Ukrainians. And I'm afraid to say we are not just one nation. They're going to be destroyed like we are now. They're going to be our countries if this war is not going to be stopped. Vladimir, you know, the, while all of this is happening, the International Court of Justice, uh, you know, had an order which was quite clear that Russia should suspend military operations, uh, you know, and support to armed outfits. But has there been any headway? You've been out there on the ground. Your brother Vitaly Klitschko is the mayor of Kyiv. How are you seeing that? Has any of this actually stopped? Has that verdict by the International Court of Justice had any effect at all? While we're speaking, there are fights going on. There yeah. is nothing that now is going towards the peace in the country. Russian boots, military equipment, soldiers must leave Ukrainian soil, must leave and stop this war now. We will lose more life. This event that is happening now is going to lead to humanitarian catastrophic event. There are going to be consequences, no matter what, there are going to be consequences for this reckless, senseless war and start of it. And eventually, as we know, all the wars eventually will come to an end. This end must come sooner than later. Yeah. And only with the international community we can stop Russian aggression and better to stop it as soon as possible.
You know, while you know, while those talks of ceasefires have happened, there have been uh, you know multiple limited ceasefires, Vladimir, across your country. The Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov says that both sides could be coming to some kind of an understanding about Ukraine as a neutral state, like that of Austria or Sweden. As you know, is a neutral state status acceptable to Kiev? Is it acceptable to you? I don't have political office behind me and I'm not representing any. Yeah. I'm not a politician even. Yes, my brother is mayor of city of Kiev, Kiev and the capital. Whatever decision is going to be made, that's going to be afterwards. But this war must be stopped yeah. now. And then everything else is coming up to a conclusion. But now, one more time, while we're speaking, there are getting human lives lost that must be stopped now this war must stop now russian army must go home and leave ukrainian soil uh, vladimir you know despite all the calls for a no-fly zone uh, you know the nato has not paid heed to president zelensky's request that has been made practically every day since this entire invasion began uh, you know the mariupol theater bombing that you were talking about was an airstrike it appears that even though your country has been managed to shoot down lots of russian aircraft and helicopters uh, this one big demand by ukraine has not been met by nato uh, do you feel as a ukrainian do you feel let down by nato because there is a sense of betrayal and having you know been left in the lurch by nato in this crisis there is no fly zone yet and we know what we're going to take care of ourselves and going to make our own fly no fly zone we just need america we just need in this case our allies military equipment Aircraft, we're going to yes. take care of ourselves and going to take care of our sky and going to take care of everything that we have in the country we have enough manpower we can do it what we need is the equipment what we need humanitarian help military equipment in this case military and we need humanitarian help because we are getting close sure. yeah. to complete destruction and, and an event that is not going to be good for all the civilians in the country and this is going to be very dangerous for the rest of the world. We need to stop this war now. And in many ways, you know, the damage uh, in so many ways is piling up with each passing minute, with each passing hour. Uh, you know, uh, Vladimir, you and I are now talking 23 days into this entire invasion. Is there a sense that there has been a strategic miscalculation somehow to have taken on Russia without complete assurance of you know a military intervention by the West because it looks like even though you're getting all these weapons the sanctions are being piled up against Russia but the actual help that Ukraine is asking for is not coming it's not just the West it's just a complete mistake what Russia has started this war and Russia has is lying to its own people in Russia soldiers that has been captured don't know why even they need this war yeah there are no nationalist nazis in this country we are progressive country we are free country we are country that has been developed since the soviet union broke apart but only imperialistic ambitious made this one mad man in Moscow attack Ukraine and start this senseless war. There is no miscalculation. It's just madness. Madness to start it. And the consequence is going to be severe for all the parties involved, including mostly Russia. And you know that so-called denazification has been one of the things that Putin talked about when he started this war, referring, of course, to the Azov Battalion and other militias, perhaps that uh, uh, you know have neo-Nazi complexions to them. But putting that aside for the moment, I, I want to focus, Vladimir, on NATO because uh, you know, 23 days into this invasion, it appears that unless there is more material involvement from the outside, uh, you know, it's it's this, this, this has become a grinding war. It's not a light war that Putin is waging perhaps he miscalculated like you said uh, you know the strength of the Ukrainian forces but 
particularly the United States, which, you know, you've spent so much time in the U.S., uh, they appear to be silent spectators as Russia continues its aggression that has led to the death of so many Ukrainians. Of course, there have been sanctions, but very little else. Listen, there is international law. There is NATO. Ukraine was not NATO. Yeah. NATO cannot get on the Ukrainian soil. There is a law that has been broken. International law has been broken. I repeat it one more time. After Second World War and after Ukraine gave up nukes, nuclear weapons for serenity yeah. of our borders, we gave up nuclear weapons for serenity of our borders. Yep. We did it. We signed a contract, including Russia and other countries. This law, international law, broke by the attack of Russian army, the Ukrainian. And this is going to have consequences. And it will happen. But first and mostly important, we're not going to get into further discussion with NATO and everything else. We need to stop. We must stop this war. We, I'm saying the world must watching what yes. is happening now and actively, not passively watching, but actively stopping and helping us to stop Russian army, stop the invasion and get the heck out of our land. You know, the, the, the Russian armed forces, uh, you know, I'm going to repeat this again, Vladimir, because it appears that they wanted to achieve more in a smaller period of time. They may have underestimated the level of air defense in Ukraine, uh, the, you know, the kind of anti-tank weaponry that you're continuing to get from uh, the U.S. and NATO at this point of time. Uh, you know, you, you, you consistently talk about the consequences for Putin and for Russia. Uh, this has become a grinding war, a slow war, uh, where they're trying to encircle Kyiv. But as we discuss all of these, like you rightly pointed out, out there, the fighting is still on. It's not ended despite everything that's happened. There's a huge amount of damage. What is your estimate? You've seen on the outskirts of Kyiv what has happened. Through your networks, what kind of damage has done, been done so far to lives and property in Ukraine. We do know that the Ukrainian government has made very large claims of damage to the Russian side as well. Hey, listen, there is everything going to be rebuilt. Everything. What we cannot get back is the lost life. There are civilians, and I say it and stress it out one more time, civilians, children, are getting killed by the Russian army. Children, innocent men, women, and elderly. That is not a threat to anyone in this world. Getting killed, brutally killed, decaptivated, lost their limbs, lost their life. Is it not enough to act together and stop the senseless war? What else must happen? We have nuclear power plants in Ukraine. There are four of them with even more and multiple reactors. And one of them, due to Russian aggression, was on fire a couple of days ago. We are talking if any of the rockets that already landed, thousand or more than thousand rockets, Russian rockets landed on Ukrainian soil, and one of them, started the fire on a nuclear power plant. Zaporizhia, yes. If nuclear power plants can explode, that they're big, it's going to be Fukushima and Chernobyl combined in multiple times. It's going to be a disaster. How long this world is going to watch and not stop Russia? 21 days we've been fighting back this Russian aggression. How long we have to wait until the disaster will happen in this world and it will if it's not to be stopped it will i assure you it will with the stupidity of the russian army that is shooting and killing our men infrastructure and as i said nuclear power plants and we have left plenty of them in ukraine with the reactors cannot be a human mistake or it could be a human mistake and it's going to be disaster 
Larmi, just the last couple of questions. President Zelensky has said that Ukraine should come around to the idea that it's not going to become a member of the NATO. You know, that climb down has been very visible. But will Ukraine join the European Union? We saw President Zelensky got that, get that huge uh, standing ovation from the European Union Parliament. What difference in your view, Vladimir, would it make if Ukraine was a member of the European Union? We are in the heart of Europe. Eventually, we will be in EU. I'm not going to discuss NATO right now. We are not in NATO, and this is matter of fact. Yeah. We are defending ourselves pretty damn well without NATO. But we need support. We need support so less civilians, less people are going to be dead. This war, we didn't start. This is occupation of the other country by Russia. That must be stopped. Russians must go home. Final question to you, Vladimir. What, according to you, you know, you're a global citizen. You've, you, you know, you've fought all over the world. You've come back to Ukraine now. You've picked up a weapon. You're part of the territorial defense. What, according to you, does Russia want? You're talking about this madman who has started this war. Do you think Russia wants to annex Ukraine or for President Zelensky's, uh, you know, government or regime to be toppled? What do you think? Is it regime change? Russia wants to go back to USSR and make Ukrainian be part of it, as Belarus is. That's, I guess, that's what the imperialism is doing. That's what it is. And one more time, whatever Russia wants, this, listen, the, Russia and Russians, there's like different stories because the propaganda that is going on in Russia is accusing Ukraine of being bad, nationalistic and fascists and Nazis and whatever they're saying, a complete nonsense, complete lie. It doesn't exist. They thought that Ukraine will cheer up when Russian army is coming. Instead of cheering up, we're saying, screw you off. Go home. We don't want you here. I think what you, you know, what you mentioned that NATO is off the table, we're not even discussing NATO right now is what you said, uh, but help is required because with each passing hour of non-involvement from the outside, there are civilian deaths and a humanitarian crisis that's becoming bigger in front of your eyes. Thank you, Vladimir Klitschko. It's been an honor. Thank you for your time. It's good to hear from you. You're one of the most influential and well-known Ukrainians all over the world, certainly here in India as well. So we thank you. We hope you stay safe. And as you said, Ukraine is capable of defending itself. But let's hope, let's hope that this humanitarian crisis does not escalate any further. Let's hope there is some sense in the diplomatic route and the compromise that can be hammered out between both countries at this point of time. Vladimir Klitschko, thank you very much for speaking to India today. Thank you.